some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. You know, I realize it's been a while since I've uh, featured Chile de Castro on my channel, so we might as well go ahead and uh, show what kind of suffering he's having to endure in the Clark County Detention Center. Yeah, how much he's being persecuted and everything like that. You know, in his own little world anyway. So, let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy listening to this completed total imbecile whine, moan, and complain about, well, his own little first world problems. Hello world, my name is Chili DeCastro. I'm a journalist who's been wrongfully imprisoned at the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm an innocent man who has been jailed unjustfully and unrighteously. Uh, no, Chili, uh... Your misunderstanding of the law and the justice system and general courtroom decorum is the primary reason why you are currently incarcerated in the Clark County Detention Center. All falls down onto your empty-headed buffoonery because you believe that you knew everything there is to know about the law and the Constitution and everything like that. Basically, you effed around and you found out, and that's that. But you just don't want to be ma a man and take responsibility for your own actions. I mean, that's what it comes down to as well. You're not a real man. A real man would at least take responsibility for his own actions and, uh, well, try to correct them. I'm a journalist. I have a voice. I have a voice that should be heard. My videos on YouTube alone are heard or watched a million times a day. Wow, Chili, you certainly are the master bullshitter, aren't you? Yeah, even though you may be correct on some days you get uh, a million views a day, uh, that doesn't mean jack squat in the real world. That could be considered the ad populum fallacy that you pull right out of your ass. Just because you think an idea might be popular doesn't mean it's the right one. And there's also the uh, fact that there are people who watch your channel just to laugh at you, just to point out your BS as well. How many of those views are part of those million views per day? I mean, did you ever bother to think about that? This message is to you. Release me from this jail. <laughs> Oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> I've taken responsibility publicly and agreed with my family, friends, and colleagues that my behavior in court was inappropriate. I fully believe, teach, and lecture about the rule of law being fundamental to our society. It is for this reason I say to Judge Ann Zimmerman now, release me from this jail. <laughs> You serious? The nature of government and the principle of government are different. The nature of law is how it is consistent, the structure of it, of objective law. The principle of law is how government acts, how it behaves. It is the human passion that sets government into motion. This understanding of nature versus principle comes directly from Montesquieu's book, The Spirit of Law. Chili, it seems like you didn't learn a damn thing at all. You're the one who's responsible for your own actions. You effed around, you found out, and you want the judge to release you, uh, apparently to try to make her be the one that is responsible for your actions in the court instead of taking a look in a mirror and discovering that you are the only one responsible for your own actions. Well then, Judge Ann Zimmerman's principles are inconsistent and out of bounds. Why and how can I state this so emphatically clear? We have scraped the data and analyzed the last 2,000 cases of Judge Ann Zimmerman. We have identified a dozen cases that went back to a bench trial. A bench trial means that Judge Zimmerman is the judge, jury, and executioner. And so far, we have three exact cases that are the same as my charges, the same NRS codes. In the past year, this judge has given these three defendants impulse training classes, and then the misdemeanor would fall off their record. Okay, okay, so you're relying on 
three cases, uh, what, 2,000 cases uh, as part of your argument as to why the judge is wrong. Uh, how about those uh, those three cases right there? Yeah, if they were similar to yours, was there what were the differences to them? Did these uh, three uh, defendants uh, act as dumb as you did? I mean, were they more respectful or less respectful? I mean, what are the other uh, things that happened in those cases? I mean, with you, you started calling the uh, officers pigs and everything like that in the court and started disrespecting the judge as well. So, yeah, uh, maybe it's the case of looking in a mirror and figuring out who's responsible. Because I have a feeling that those other three defendants were probably, well, a bit more respectful. The data will show her and that she broke her principles putting me in jail. Judge Ann Zimmerman, release me from this jail at once. Did your parents have any children that live? Sir, yes, sir. How about they regret that? Why would the judge show obvious bias and give me such an unfair and harsh sentence? What can you do about it? First, because Zimmerman is not her maiden name. Zimmerman is the name of the Las Vegas Metro Police Lieutenant she married over two decades ago. Even after he divorced her, she kept the last name, meaning Judge Zimmerman loves cops, and I do not. She formed her bias and hatred for me before the sham trial even began. Well now, uh, going by your logic, since you have an obvious hatred for law enforcement as a whole, and the justice system as a whole, well, wouldn't it stand to reason that your utter contempt for both had led you down the road of acting like a total buffoon in the court, which uh, led to you being convicted and, uh, well, sentenced on the spot? And let's not forget that the judge had the discretion to uh, lengthen your sentence, and she could have put you in there for a year based on uh, your actions in that courtroom and other actions, but she chose the lighter sentence of six months. So I don't think she was entirely angry with you, uh, Chili. I think she just uh, shot you a warning as to, well, your behavioral issues. We, you and me, have a First Amendment right to petition our government and its officials when they have lost their virtue and broken their principles. We have not petitioned them enough. It is our only recourse to redress a clear and biased judge who's gone out of her reason and purpose to jail a nonviolent journalist. Oh, poor baby. Oh, you poor little persecuted thing. Do you actually think that being a journalist is the reason why you were in there? No, it's not the reason why you were in there. You were uh, obstructed justice, so you are paying the price for that. And yeah, that can be a nonviolent offense, and you're not the only one in jail for nonviolent offenses. I mean, come on now, do do some actual research on how the law works, and you'll see plenty of nonviolent offenses that do get people a little bit of jail time. I mean, it's called the law. Zimmerman has behaved like a monarch or a queen in a despotic government, like a rogue judge in an aristocratic government. We have a republic government that is supposed to be navigated by objective law, not by personal bias, by a judge who was the wife of a cop. Instead of acting as a custodian of justice, she has behaved like an obvious tyrant. Petition her. Petition her and demand that she release me from this dungeon immediately, swiftly, and please. Petition the court in the tens of thousands because it is the only recourse that we, the people, have. Judge Zimmerman, the only way you will be able to restore the word honor to your name is by releasing me now. I have owned my errors, Judge, but have you owned yours? Uh, Chili, the only one here that needs to atone for their actions is you. Uh, the judge followed the letter of the law. You, on the other hand, well, you acted like a complete fool in the courtroom and out on the streets, which is why 
you are where you are at right now. So just like I said, take a look in the mirror and you'll see who's responsible. I know that person looking back at you can handle that burden, can't they? Can't they, Chili? Can you handle it? Can you handle taking responsibility for your own actions? Because, well, I guess not. Because clearly you can't because you are incarcerated because you couldn't take responsibility for your own actions. I don't think that you followed the rule of law on that day in court. You've lost integrity. I do not believe that you have the right to search me illegally. I believe that you violated my constitutional rights, as did the bailiff under your directives when he snatched the phones out of my hand. The bar complaint I'll be filing, well, it may eventually determine that. It depends. However, my two petitions will most certainly be filed. I had six full-time employees and now only three. Le who? The her. Oh, wow, Chili. You actually believe all that uh, garbage that your rights were violated that day? You know, if you actually believe that, yeah, go ahead and file it with the uh, courts or whatever, the bar, whatever. Uh, I doubt it'll go anywhere because, well, there are rules of the court and you didn't follow them. And then it comes down to, well, your loss of employees. I hope they find better jobs than, uh, well, having to deal with you. I mean, I'm sure dealing with that narcissistic personality disorder that you've got was a, a real drain on them. I mean, I should know. I've, I've had to deal with complete narcissists uh, such as yourself, and believe me, it's not easy. Because the biased Judge Zimmerman did not give me three days to get my business orders and affairs in order, she simply threw me in jail directly from court. Perhaps it is because you, Judge Zimmerman, need impulse training classes. Uh, Chile, uh, let me break the news to you. Uh, uh, you're an idiot, because if you actually think that you are the first and only person in United States history to be taken into custody immediately after you were convicted in a trial. Well, dude, you are completely wrong. I mean, it happens every single day. You are not the only one. Because you know what? I'm sure this is done because, you know, people in the past have been known to, well, run away when they are convicted and uh, they really don't want to serve the time. And so therefore, you know, that this has to happen. Instead of torture cuffing people, put a V-neck frame over their shoulders, much like football pads, with a camera on the front of the chest and a camera on the back of the chest. Can you imagine that, actually not putting people in torture cuffs and adding a tracking device? Chaining anybody except the criminally insane is inhumane and barbaric. WHAT THE fuck? <laughs> okay, so you, uh, want, uh barbaric practices on uh, mental patients then. You do realize that's against modern ethical standards, don't you? But you know what? I can see where you're coming from on this, Chili. Considering you have no concept of what the laws actually are, nor what the Constitution is all about, I can see how you have no idea what the ethical standards are for the treatment of uh, those with uh, severe mental disorders are. I mean, it's only natural coming from you. Judge Zimmerman, the only way to restore any honor to your name is to release me now with time served. It's a fact that I will sue you. If you do not have me killed in here, then when I leave this jail, I will in fact sue you. <laughs> Upon leaving this jail, should I live through this, I will file a petition against the Clark County Detention Center for clearly cheating me and violating my civil rights. Nowhere in the Clark County Detention Center handbook does it read the words, no live streaming. Well, I'm sure that must be a given considering it is a secure detention facility, you freaking moron, uh, where a lot of rights and privileges are taken away from you because you are being punished. I mean, you can't exactly have cameras in the facility because those would be considered contraband. It is standard security procedures. And when it really comes right down to it, uh, Chili, you are small potatoes to the Nevada court system. You are nothing. You are nothing but an uh, ignorant pain in the ass to everybody there. They don't care about you. 
I mean, you're not being persecuted. You're not being targeted. You went through the process just like everybody else. I mean, you are nothing special. Now, if you made it this far into the video, let's just go ahead and take a look at a soft heart that I covered a while back. This one ended up getting arrested and uh, was really quite insane. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage, shall we? So I can get my spill right into the camera, right? You spill? <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, that's what you say, yeah. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, Book 1, Section 308, which says, and I quote, I reserve my right not to be compelled to perform under any contract or commercial agreement that I did not enter into knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally. Furthermore, I reserve my right not to be compelled to accept the liability of said commercial contract or said commercial agreement that I did not enter into knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally. While you have some good memory retention, I just wonder where you got that quote from. Did you get it off some Sovtard website? Because that's not what the uh, UCC says in that particular section you just quoted. But not like it really matters anyway, considering the UCC or the Uniform Commercial Code are codes that govern the laws of commerce in this country. It does not govern anything to do with civil or criminal matters. It is a guideline for commerce. Nothing more, nothing less. But these soft hearts tend to think that the United States is a corporation and not a sovereign nation. You sound like a well-spoken gentleman. Thank you, sir. So let me ask you a question, just from my knowledge here. What does all that mean? That means that uh, the Uniform Commercial Code, I didn't enter into a contract with the United States government. I didn't accept the United States dollar as a contract, which is what it is. So how do you buy and sell something? Uh, well, I'm forced to. You're forced to accept the dollar. You don't have a choice. Oh, so accept it, but you just don't, you can't accept it, but you don't accept it. I don't accept the contract. I accept the payment because that's what people pay with. I don't accept the contract because I didn't enter into that contract. Okay. Every law written since then was since, not since when? Since, since 1933. 1933. Yes, sir. Since 1933. So what, what did people use before that? The Constitution of the United States of America. <laughs> Okay, you are quite the dimwit. I mean, come on, Dingleberry. There were laws passed before 1933. In fact, here are a few examples of them going by the screen as we speak. I mean, come on now. you got to have a little bit more intelligence than that. Yeah, but what, what monetary... Uh, gold. Uh, gold. Gold standard. The uh, gold standard was in use from the late 19th century to the early 20th century until after the Great Depression. But during this time, even during the time of the gold standard, paper money was still issued. So you're kind of oversimplifying a very complicated issue. Or you just have a total misunderstanding of the situation as a whole, which I'm guessing it is more of an issue of misunderstanding by this point. So, uh, they abolished the Constitution and, and stated the Uniform Commercial Code, which I didn't know. And so, all your traffic laws are written under that Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, can I get a citation on that, dude? Because, you know, uh, I've heard all sorts of things about, uh, the Constitution since I was a child. One in particular that stuck in my head was that the, uh, Constitution was written by communists in the 1950s to subvert the United States, which, uh, doesn't really make any sense at all. But let's carry on with this man's stupidity, shall we? Here's the kicker. The judge is not liable. And you can't sue the state. You cannot. You cannot sue the state? No, you cannot sue the state. So who, who do you sue? And the judge is protected by the bench as long as he wears that black robe. But the district attorney who no, prosecutes... I don't think anybody's above the law here. No, no, listen to me. Listen to me. Pay attention. 
I'm not arguing. I'm just I'm, I'm trying sure. to learn because I hear I'm a lot saying. about this. I'm just curious to learn. Okay, it. so the judge, the judge is protected by the bench as long as he's on bench wearing a black robe. Anything he says, you cannot sue him for that. He's protected by the bench. What if he and does you misconduct? And you, well, that's that's different. Oh, okay. How is that different? I need citations. Give me citations of or examples of anything you've got. I mean, just don't spout off a lot of bullshit that you don't know anything about. But if he's it's outside of his conduct, then he's liable. But he's protected for what his rulings are. Because his rulings are according to the law. According to the state's law. That's right. According to the Uniform Commercial Code. It's also according to the Constitution. <laughs> No, you moron, according to the local, state, or federal laws, depending on the situation, not to the Uniform Commercial Code, which does not govern the United States. The Constitution and the laws do, not the Uniform Commercial Code. But I have not infringed on anyone else's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Okay, so... Here's, here's the part where the state cannot be my accuser. Being an employee of the state cannot be my accuser. So if there's no injured party, then there's no crime. Ah, yes, the classic no victim, no crime uh, argument. That is a load of garbage anyway. Let's use insurance as an example, which you apparently don't have any. If you're driving without insurance... That doesn't seem like a uh, issue, right? Well, what happens if you run into somebody? You run into somebody's property or you injure somebody? Well, you don't have the insurance to cover the damages to the uh, property or persons. Now, that becomes an issue of who pays for the damages in this particular scenario. If you cannot afford it, then your insurance company will pay for it. Otherwise... People will get sued, and it becomes a whole legal issue, which is why laws were created to try to curtail this issue. Yeah, but it's so you law. have to, you you guys now have the burden of proof. You have to bring forth an injured party, and it cannot be a state officer. But if the law says something, you go against it, then you're breaking the law, which means what law? I have not infringed on anyone else's right to life, liberty, or pursuit of happiness. I am well within the Constitution of the United States of America. Yeah, but driving is a privilege, it's not a right. Driving is not a privilege. Driving is a fundamental right. I have the right to free and unrestricted travel. Oh yeah, you have the fundamental right to travel anywhere you want to go in the United States. And using a means of conveyance at your disposal. But if that means of conveyance is a motorized vehicle, then it becomes a privilege regulated by the state. There has to be a licensing process to uh, ensure that people know how to operate these machines so they don't go hurting anybody or damaging property. And then there has to be insurance laws to make sure that if people are hurt or property is damaged, that that will be taken care of. But you just don't seem to understand that, do you, Soft Hard? I mean, hell, I understood it when it was explained to me at the age of 15. Well over 20 years ago by this time. How old are you, and why is it that you can't seem to understand this little concept? Anywhere throughout the continental United States of America, by any means I deem necessary. Right, as long as you by have coach, the document. No, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. By coach, by motor car, uh -huh. by uh, horse and carriage, by uh, foot, by motorcycle, by whatever deem, means I deem necessary. And unless I'm operating a commercial vehicle, driver's license, insurance, seatbelt tag, and inspection sticker are not required. Wow, you have fallen so far down the rabbit hole that I don't think there's any escape for you. But let me try to help you out, Soft Hard. If you would actually take some time to look up the laws and understand what the Tenth Amendment is, uh, you would understand that these things are required. But I think at this point it might be a useless endeavor to even try to help this guy out because he's consumed 
copious amounts of lead paint chips until the point where his brain has completely fried. Are my guys over there in that truck? They're driving a commercial vehicle. That's a company truck. And that company truck has commercial insurance on it. And they have driver's license and they are legal because they are a commercial vehicle. judges there and you don't believe in judges do you i do believe in judges i believe strongly in our jurisdictional system okay so so those judges those judges at, up at the supreme court level have heard this case so many times that they will not even hear it anymore they yeah rule they in my favor they rule in my favor every time seriously seriously okay give me an example uh, and i can't think of a case right off the top of my head i'm kind of rattled right now but you know I'm, i am in handcuffs in the front seat of a car going to jail <clears throat> it's funny that you were able to come up with a uh other BS arguments this whole time while you were sitting there, but you just can't seem to come up with any uh, rulings on the subject. So, which tells me you haven't actually done your research and that you are just continuously spouting off more and more BS anyway. So, why should we believe you? And even if you did present a case that you claimed was on your side. A lot of times I look up these cases and they have nothing to do with anything the Sovtard is trying to argue. Because you know what? You idiots never actually take the time to actually do the proper research to understand what these cases are. You just spout off what you hear other people talk about instead of thinking for yourself well at this point i'm just going to end the video right here because they'll continue to talk to each other about other things after this so i hope you like the video i will see you on the next one Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?